Hello and welcome to the weekly bread. After three weeks away, we're back and breader than ever. Our slice of the week is a fist fight broke out in the Georgian Parliament on Monday as Mamulka Dinaradze, leader of the incumbent Georgian Dream Party, was punched in the face on national television by opposition MP Aleko Elisashvili, with others joining in on the chaos. The driving force behind this brawl is Georgian Dream's plan to push forward a law stating that all organisations that receive funding from abroad must be registered as foreign agents, claiming it to be a necessary measure to promote transparency and fight quote-unquote pseudo-liberal values imposed by foreign entities. Critics to the legislation argue that the purpose of this law in reality is to undermine opposition to the party, citing a similar law passed in Russia, a country not favoured among Georgians due to the 2008 invasion that saw the regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia break away as Russian puppet states. Elisashvili received the cheers of the hundreds of protesters who had gathered outside the parliament building to voice their opposition. Georgian Dream had tried to pass the same law 13 months ago, but protests back then had forced them to give up on it. The next elections in the country are due this year. Georgian Dream continues to be the most popular party in Georgia according to polls conducted, but its margin has narrowed since 2020, when it won with an already narrow majority. In Europe, Croatian President Zoran Milanovic has spiced up the upcoming parliamentary election between the centre-left Social Democrats, or SDB-led coalition, and the dominating right-wing Croatian Democratic Union, or HDZ, in the country after making several scathing comments on the latter. Milanovic started a crusade against corruption and everything he says Prime Minister Andrei Plenkovic stands for. People may not approve of Milanovic as president, but they like the way he talks, political analyst Kresimir Makan explained to the BBC. The president has an further announced he'd be the SDP coalition's candidate for Prime Minister, which has caused an immediate narrowing of the gap between the two main parties and opinion polls. However, the Constitutional Court ruled that he cannot play part in the election campaign unless he resigned from his post as president citing that the Croatian constitution demands the president to be a figurehead for all citizens and not a party-affiliated figure. In response, Milanovic has flamed the court as peasants and their judgment as illiterate, accusing them of being pawns of the HDZ. His controversial comments haven't just been about his opposition, though, as he has also lambasted illegal immigration, military aid to the Ukraine, and the issue of Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Views such as these are surprising for a centre-left politician, but Sandra Bencic, the Green Left Modzimo party's candidate for Prime Minister, has argued that the president is just playing the tactical game, saying a lot of the reaching out towards the right wing is actually tactics. He's taking on all these mythical positions that are usually part of the HTZ strategy. Prime Minister Plenkovic, on the other hand, has found himself having to argue against the president's points. It's bizarre, he says. I'm trying to minimise the negative effects of the unconstitutional acts that were committed by the president. The constitutional court couldn't have been clearer, he told the BBC. Although he's not officially a candidate, it's expected that if the SDP were to win, Milanovic would resign from the presidency to take the role of prime minister. But even if the victory goes to the HDZ in the end, he will still have a large role to play as president in the formation of a governing coalition. In Africa, 38 prisoners have escaped the Moroni prison in Comoros by simply walking out the front door. Public prosecutor Ali Mohamed Jornay has blamed negligent security for the breakout that occurred in the early morning and believes the incident was the brainchild of a soldier who was arrested for the death of a fan at a World Cup qualifying match last year, telling AFP news agency that, quote, the escape was instigated by the soldier who fired shots at the Malozini football stadium in Moroni, end quote. A government spokesperson, on the other hand, has stated to Reuters that the incident appears to have been pre-planned, although no plan has been unveiled. Kamala's Info's 
a news company in the country, has corroborated on the claim, reporting that the escape was helped by, quote, insider collusion. Moroni prison is known to be overcrowded, with over 200 inmates imprisoned. That's double the prison's actual capacity. This also isn't the first time a massive breakout has happened here. In 2020, 23 more inmates had escaped under unclear circumstances. The fugitives from this round of escapees are on the run and authorities are busy tracking them down in Asia. On Saturday, Iran launched over 300 missiles and drones to attack targets in Israel, although the grand majority were shot down by air defences and fighter jets, which included help from France from their airbase in Jordan. The Israel Defence Force, or IDF, has claimed to have shot down 99% of the incoming projectiles, but later reports suggest many of those fired either failed to launch or fell short of their targets. In any case, a total of four ended up hitting in and around the Nevatim Air Base. The IDF's Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, has confirmed that, quote, this launch of so many missiles, cruise missiles and drones into Israeli territory will be met with a response, unquote, with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu meeting with Defence Minister Yoav Gallant and centrist rival Benny Gantz on Monday to discuss the next steps, most notably how to deter another attack while not starting an all-out war, as Iran has threatened. In response to the planned counter-attack, White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby told CNN, quote, we respect that that's a decision the War Cabinet, the Prime Minister, have to make. We know that they live in a very tough neighbourhood. However, he has distanced the United States from any responsibility for what will happen, saying President Joe Biden had quote, also been very clear that we don't want a war with Iran. We don't seek to widen and broaden this conflict. Unquote. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron has also called for restraint in the Israeli response to the attack, saying, quote, we need to be by Israel's side to ensure its protection to the maximum, but also to call for a limit to avoid an escalation, end quote. He went on to emphasise the importance of, quote, isolating Iran, convincing countries in the region that Iran is a danger, increasing sanctions and reinforcing pressure over nuclear activities, end quote. There are various options open to Israel on how they'll respond, with the Biden administration suggesting a large-scale cyber attack, an attack on an Iranian target in the third-party territory such as Lebanon or Syria, or a covert operation targeting Iran's nuclear facilities. In North America, this first quarter of the year has seen Apple be overtaken by Samsung as the world's leading phone manufacturer with 20.8% and 17.3% of the market share respectively. This comes as iPhone shipments have dropped about 10% this quarter compared to last year thanks to steep competition by Android phone manufacturers. Samsung, its main rival, has released the Galaxy S24 series, seeing with it an 8% increase in sales compared to last year's Galaxy S23. Having sold 55.4 million units in the first quarter last year, this year, Apple sold only 50.1 million. One of the big drivers behind this is the shrinking of iPhone sales in China, where they saw a 2.1% drop compared to figures from last year. This comes as China, Apple's third largest market, has had some companies and government bodies limit the use of Apple devices for their employees in response to the US government's restriction on Chinese phones and apps. Currently, Chinese company Xiaomi occupies the third position in global phone sales, with 14.1% of the market share. Apple will be hosting its Worldwide Developers Conference in June, where they'll be showing off new updates to their software. Investors will be hoping that this conference will see news about Apple's investment into AI on their devices, something the company, having been overtaken by Microsoft early this year as the most valuable company in the world, has not yet mentioned in their plans. In South America, with the El Nino weather phenomenon causing record-breaking droughts across Latin America, the mayor of Colombia's capital city has been pleading for residents to take all measures possible to save water. Suggestions by Bogota Mayor Carlos Fernando Gawa include having couples take their showers together, 
and residents foregoing their daily hygiene if they won't be leaving the house. Quote, this is an educational exercise in saving water, nothing else. That kind of thing is going to help us a lot. Those behavioural changes are key, he announced. The need for such drastic measures comes as the usually rainy capital city has suffered a long period of hot and dry weather, causing wildfires to spread in the forests around the city, which usually sees double the rainfall as London. The Chingaza Reservoir, which supplies 70% of Bogota's water needs, sits at just 16% capacity, and the local government estimates there to be less than two months' worth of water remaining. The city has split into nine zones, which alternate in getting cut off from the water grid in order to preserve whatever is left. In Oceania, Molly, a pet magpie owned by Australian couple Juliet Wells and Rhys Mortensen, has been returned to its family following a six-week seizure by the Department of Environment, Science and Education, or DESI for short. The magpie has become a star in Australia thanks to the couple's Instagram page, currently with 800,000 followers, dedicated to interaction between it and their pet dog Peggy. However, they were forced to surrender the bird, which they had rescued as a chick four years ago, to Desi after the government agency caught wind, with them saying it had been taken from the wild unlawfully, with no permit, license or authority. Posting about the event online, Walls and Mortensen said, quote, We are asking why a wild magpie can't decide for himself where he wants to live and who he wants to spend his time with. End quote. The couple has received mass support from fans of Molly, with a petition to bring him home earning over 150,000 signatures. In the end, vets consulted by Desi on the issue stated that the bird had been quote, highly habituated, end quote, thus rendering its return to the wild impossible. Following a long debate, it was decided Molly would be sent back to its owners with a wildlife carer's license issued to them, allowing them to legally harbour the magpie under certain conditions. One of the conditions is that Wells and Mortensen will not be allowed to make quote, ongoing commercial gain from Molly. The couple had already sold a book and t-shirts with Molly and Peggy's likenesses on it, but they insist profiting from the animal was never the intention and that the money they made didn't amount to much anyway. The Australian magpie is a protected species of Australia and is considered a cornerstone species to the local ecosystem. Meanwhile, in Portugal, the official Facebook account of Chega, the right-wing political party with firmly the third largest presence in the Portuguese parliament, has been restricted from being able to post images and videos for a whopping 10 years. The social media page, which has 198,000 followers, received a notification from Facebook saying their account had been restricted for 3,649 days. Quote, Your account's activity was found to have disrespected our community guidelines. For this reason, one or more of your usual actions have been blocked, end quote. The notification read. Shiga members believe the restriction comes after the account posted a picture of three people celebrating having cut a woman's hair with the post referring to the, quote, impunity of the Roma community in Portugal. Diario de Notícias has attempted to contact Facebook's parent company, Meta, asking what the 10-year media ban is about exactly, but received no answer. Shiga party leader Andrea Ventura told the newsletter that he would be taking the issue to court to try and appeal the restriction and would also bring the topic up in the Republican <coughs> Assembly. He further explained that for now, the account would be getting around these restrictions by reposting images and videos from Ventura's personal accounts.